The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your mother and your father. He replied to him and said, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard is it? how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Excuse me, <clears throat> then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is poss impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend in our Gospel passage, we're presented with a very important question and a very difficult message. The question is, what prohibits us or what gets in the way of us following Jesus? And the difficult message is, is that there's a lot of things in our lives, there's a lot of creature comforts, as we call them, that we have that sometimes take precedence over our faith, over Jesus. And the tough message is, is that those things are keeping us out of heaven. That's not just my words, that's Jesus' words. Jesus says, unless we give up these things, unless we're able to set these things aside, at least when it comes to weighing them in comparison to our faith, unless we're able to set them to the side and say, Christ, you are first and foremost, heaven's going to be really hard to get into. And I don't know about you, but I kind of like the easy road into heaven, right? I'd kind of like it to be easier for me to go to heaven. So Jesus lays it out pretty good for us. But I think if you're anything like me, there's things that get in the way of that. So I oftentimes have to ask myself the question, how far would I go to follow Jesus? At what extreme would I go to to follow Jesus Christ? This is what this young man, this wealthy young man in our gospel reading today is talking about. Is talking about he has many creature comforts. He has many things at his disposal. He has much wealth. 
many riches. You can read into that as whatever you want. He probably had lots of money, but he also probably had lots of stuff. And when Jesus tells him, well, you know what to do to go to heaven, right? So you follow the Ten Commandments. Keep holy the Sabbath. Keep, uh, do not uh, dishonor God. You know, do all these things in the commandments. That's what you need to do. And he says, Lord, I've done all these things. What more must I do? And Jesus says, okay. You challenge me. What more must you do to get into heaven? Sell all of your possessions. Sell everything you have. Give it to the poor. He knew it would be hard for this man. Just like Jesus knows it would be hard for us to do the same thing, which is why I ask you the question, at what extreme would you go to to follow Jesus? If Jesus said, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to you know, give up something in your life in order to follow him, how far would you go? I think this is what our first reading from the book of Wisdom is trying to get to us. It said, when I, I asked for prudence and it was given to me, I begged for wisdom and it was granted. This is what I wrote in, in the newspaper this weekend, talking about prudence and wisdom. How God has instilled this into us, this virtue of prudence, in order to make good and right decisions and at the good and right time. Huh? Because oftentimes we know we might make good decisions, but maybe not at the best time. So prudence helps us to make good decisions of what we need to maybe set aside in our life that is taking the place of Christ. So then that makes us ask ourselves, what takes the place of Christ? Are there times when I know I should pray, but yet I do this or that instead? Are there times when I know, and it's not just a money talk, but are there times that I know that I should be supporting the church, but yet I go off and I buy something new for myself instead? This is what Jesus is talking about. This is what prudence can help us with the virtue of prudence. It can help us to make those good and wise decisions for what? For the kingdom of God. For what all of us are striving for. Please God, that's what we're all striving for is the kingdom of God. We all want this. And what I find the most interesting about this encounter of Jesus and the rich young man and Jesus and his disciples is if you listened closely in there, what did it say? How did it say Jesus responded? It said he looked at him and loved him. He looked at him and he loved him. I think, in my opinion, that's the most important part of the story and that's the most important part for us in growing in our faith and taking that next step and doing something maybe that we wouldn't think that we're able to do. Why? Because of our faith. Jesus looked at him and loved him. So you ask yourself, if Jesus were standing before you and he looked at you with love, he looked at you not for your sins. He looked at you not for your failures and not even for the stuff and the things that you've built up in your life, but he looked at you and he loved you for who you are. He loved you because he knew he knows how God created you out of love. And he looks at you and loves you. How would you respond? Would we respond like the young, wealthy man and say, well, I guess that's it for me, and walk away? Or will we see that look of love, how Jesus intently looks at us, and by the way, he's constantly looking at us. He's constantly loving us, and looking at us and watching us. It's only when we stop and recognize it it's only when we give him the chance to show us how much he loves us that we really notice that he has always been looking. He's always been watching us. He's always been loving us. So that's why it's a, such a, an important part of this story in the gospel. Because it actually says it twice. It says it twice because not only when the young rich man, but also when the, his own apostles asked him, well, we've given up everything, Lord. What about us? What does it say? He looked at them. I think this is key. It's key to our understanding Jesus' love for us. 
It's key to understanding how he wants us to respond to him by just noticing that he's looking at us with love. By noticing that he wants us to give of ourselves to him and not just get stuff from him. Right? It's not all about just Jesus I need, Jesus I need, Jesus I need, Jesus I need, and I would really like some of this too. That's, that's called grocery store Catholicism. That's not what we're about, right? But those creature comforts and those things that we think that we need sometimes get in the way of growing in our faith. They get in the way of growing in prudence and wisdom. They get in the way of our relationship with Jesus and noticing him. It's like uh, hoarders. I know most of us are probably not hoarders like we see on TV, but we're hoarders in the sense of stuff gets in the way that it gets hard to see Jesus. It gets hard to notice Jesus as he does what? As he looks at us and loves us. As he looks at us and he loves us. And that, that look and that love invites us invites us into a deeper relationship to not maybe focus so much on the comforts of this life, but focus on what we can do with Him and for Him. What we can maybe sacrifice a little bit. What we can maybe give up a little bit in our life. So what is that extreme that we would go to? How far would you go to follow Jesus? How far would you go when you recognize Jesus looking at you and loving you, because as I said, he is right here and right now in a very real way. He's looking at you and loving you. So how far will you go for him? I love the famous quote of Pope Benedict that Father Matthew uses all the time, and he, he constantly quotes it to our kids at the school from uh, Pope Benedict, and it says that you were not made for comfort, but you're made for greatness. And the comforts of this world oftentimes get so in the way and we work so hard for the comforts that we don't strive for the greatness. That we don't see that we're called to something greater. That we don't see that sometimes it's not getting more stuff, but maybe it's more about giving and what I give to Jesus. he tell you the truth, he's not asking for your house. He's not asking for your car. He doesn't want your stuff. What he wants is your heart. What he wants is you to follow him without any of that other stuff getting in the way so that you can see him clearly as he looks at you and loves you. This is the invitation to the young man who is called, who really has a desire in his heart to follow Jesus. I think we do too, right? Right? Please, God, each and every day that desire to follow Jesus grows in our hearts. And I know it's in our hearts. I see it in your hearts. I see it in your eyes when we come out of the church or come into the church. As I'm getting to know you better in this third year of my being pastor here, I see that desire in your eyes. I see that desire to be in relationship with Jesus, to know that Jesus is looking at you and loving you. What's getting in the way of that? What stops you? What is preventing you? Whatever that is, we just pray today that God can take that from us. That God can help us to set that aside so that we can really see and understand that that desire of our hearts is found in Jesus. That deepest desire is found in Jesus and in Jesus alone. May we find our heart's greatest desire as Jesus looks at us and loves us.